In this video, we're going to discuss beta alanine biosynthesis. What is beta alanine? Well, beta alanine is a beta amino acid. So what does that mean? Well, all the amino acids that we have ever normally seen in proteins, they're all alpha amino acids, meaning they have a carboxyl group and an amine attached to the same carbon, which is termed the alpha carbon. Beta amino acids do not have that property. Their carboxyl group is not attached to the same carbon as their amine. And if you actually look down here on the bottom left, this is the structure of beta alanine where my mouse is, and you can hopefully see that the amine and the carboxyl group are not attached to the same carbon. It's a beta amino acid. Okay. It turns out that beta alanine can be synthesized in humans, and it's done through a fairly uh, interesting pathway. It's actually done through a catabolic pathway, although it's actually half catabolic in the sense that it's degrading a pyrimidine, but biosynthetic in the fact that it's actually creating a beta amino acid. Now, beta alanine is unique in the sense that it is pretty much the only main beta amino acid that can be synthesized de novo in humans. Okay, And it turns out that for skeletal muscle, beta alanine is extremely important. So let's talk about it. Now you have several pathways here. There's a reductive pathway, the rut pathway, and the oxidative pathway. It turns out that humans, which is what we're focusing on here, only do the reductive pathway to synthesize beta alanine. In fact, notice the other pathways don't even synthesize beta alanine. So in general, when we want to degrade pyrimidines, particularly uracil, and we'll talk about this in the nucleotide playlist, but uracil in humans is degraded by the reductive pathway. So let's briefly discuss it. Uracil is going to be degraded, or we're going to say reduced, to dihydrouracil by dihydropyrimidine dehydrogenase. Dihydrouracil is then going to be hydrolyzed open, meaning a ring-breaking reaction, by dihydropyrimidinase, which is a hydrolase. And then this enzyme beta, ureidopropionase, is going to remove ammonia and carbon dioxide and leave behind this larger molecule, which happens to be beta-alanine the only beta amino acid that we can synthesize de novo. Um, there might be some others that are very minor, but this is, the, this is the most important one, and luckily we can synthesize it through this pathway. Now, like I mentioned, beta alanine is made at very high concentration in skeletal muscles. The reason it's done that, as we're going to see in the next slide, is beta alanine is going to be condensed with another amino acid, and it's going to um, basically be a buffer for vigorously exercising skeletal muscle. Now, one thing I want to remind you, and hopefully this makes sense, is whenever you have a, a, a tissue or a cell that's highly metabolically active, it's going to be producing a lot of acid, and so its pH is going to drop. And that can be detrimental to the function of the cell, so it's an important thing to have buffers. Okay? It turns out that beta alanine and its condensed uh, uh, derivative carnosine are going to act as buffers inside skeletal muscle cell and, and provide a large contribution to the overall buffering capacity. In fact, it's been shown that there's some evidence that supplementing beta alanine can improve exercise performance in highly active muscle tissue, and that's because it acts as a buffer in this form, but also once it gets condensed into carnosine. Okay. In fact, if you go to any kind of drugstore, um, Drug Emporium is an example, but there's lots of others. Um, you will probably see supplements that say beta alanine. And hopefully you, now you have an understanding of kind of what it does. But it turns out the main function is going to be for uh, beta alanine to be condensed with histidine. Okay, so it turns out under biosynthetic conditions, we have here beta alanine and histidine. This is just normal L-histidine, the proteinogenic amino acid. There's an enzyme that, that uses an ATP to do this, but it's called carnosine synthase. It's going to condense beta alanine and histidine into carnosine. Carnosine is a dipeptide or a dimer, and carnosine is the main buffering component. In, term, in fact, beta alanine is a fairly weak buffer by itself. However, when it dimerizes with histidine, which is already a good buffer by itself, um, it's able to have a pretty large buffering capacity and protect against the pH effects of vigorously exercising skeletal muscle. Okay? And that's going to be carnosine's main function. And that production of carnosine is through carnosine synthase. 
Now, if we are in an energetically stressed state or in a catabolic state, this reaction, there's another enzyme called carnosinase, which is a hydrolase, a different enzyme, that's going to hydrolyze carnosine back into histidine and beta alanine. And the beta alanine can be recycled that way. Okay? But suffice it to say, when you combine beta alanine and histidine into a dipeptide, the buffering capacity goes sharply up. Carnosine is a very good buffer in skeletal muscle, and that's the main tissue that's going to express uh, either one of these enzymes. Okay, So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.